Okay, guys, so this is a sample recording of uh, for the sample property for assignment number one. So the address for the assignment will be different, and I'm choosing this address for a different parcel, but it'll walk you through what I'm looking for for the evaluation. So again, I'm going to say if we use ZATSUM, Zoning Access, Title, Topography, Soils, Sensitive Areas, Utilities, and Market Study, we can evaluate most parcels. I'm not asking you to do all those right now, just certain ones of them to evaluate a sample site. So if we, the sample site that we have, and, and now we're gonna use a Redfin to start. You can search on Redfin often by address, MLS number. The property you're gonna look up is gonna be using a, um, a MLS number because it's listed and it's a it's a parcel that doesn't have a complete address so um, that's the one you'll be doing in your assignment but right here I'm going to do this one I put in the address earlier so it's popping up it's for an address in a piece of land in Auburn so you can tell from the picture some quick information about it this is a 10.3 acre parcel of property and you can click here to see the map of where it is, uh, zoom out to see where it is in relation to Seattle. It's Southeast King County. And we can go through the photos here and you can see more pictures of the property. You can come down here and get more details on the property as well. These are often filled in by brokers, so they may or may not have accurate information, but uh, things like the acreage and uh, some other details should be correct. But again, uh, maybe, maybe not correct information on utilities. So our first step is gonna be to go look up the zoning information. And we're gonna open up and use King County Parcel Viewer. We're going to launch it. I hope that when you saw that button I launched right there. If not, we'll do it again real quick. Hit this launch, either the launch button or this map. Up here in the corner, you can do a search on King County's IMAP, and you can do this by tax parcel number or address. I am just going to choose the tax parcel, also the tax ID number. Hit the search bar. It's going to bring up the parcel right here and identify it. This is the parcel boundary. We can click here and it's going to show us maps. And there's the 2019 map. This one just has it with labels for the roads, shows the roadway here. You can look at 2017, what it looked like 2015, 2007. There it was all treed and forested, 2000, forested. You go back to 1936. But we're going to get to 2019. We're going to click on the property. It's going to bring up the outline. Sometimes you have to click a time or two, and sometimes twice. And we want to get to the assessor's report. And then once we get here, we're going to hit the property detail. All right, so here's some really good information that the county has provided us about this property. And the first question over here is, what is the zoning for the parcel? We're using IMAP and we use the tax parcel number. We could use the address as well. So the zoning is right here. The zoning is A10. A stands for agricultural. Uh, RA stands is a rural residential. R would just be residential and it may have a number after it. Um, but this is A10 for agricultural, one home per 10 acres. If it had said RA5 or RA10 or R10, that would have been a rural residential zone. So we now know that. Um, 
the zoning for it. Okay, and over here is the size and square footage over here. But we have the A10, and the last question I asked for was what is an allowed use on the parcel? And I've given you the, the permitted use table here from King County, and I said it was zoned A10, so it's an agricultural zone. And we're gonna look for, we found the A, and we're gonna come down here and look for things that start with P. P are permitted uses. If there's nothing there, it means it's not an allowed use. In this area, you cannot do townhouse, houses, apartments, mobile home parks, or any of these. What is allowed is a single family detached home. You come across in the rural residential for the RA zone, for rural residential zone, same thing. And there are other residential zones for the urban reserve and R1 to 8. Once again, single family detached is allowed in all these zones. In some of these other zones, you can do townhomes and apartments. But again, in the agricultural zone, you can't. And these other ones in the rural area are conditional uses. So we want to stay with the P, the permitted uses. So in this zone, a single family detached home is allowed. Uh, residential accessory uses are allowed. Home occupation is allowed. A bed and breakfast would be allowed. So these would be the allowed uses on this parcel. Then we're looking at access. And once again, we can look at the aerial photo from King County. And there is a public road that runs up here. And then there's a road that comes right down to the property. Uh, this is a private road. Sometimes it would say it, but the road comes right to the property. So for this level, it looks like we have access right to the property. We may look at another parcel like down here. I don't know where the access would come. This road seems to show that it stops here and no other road seems to touch this property. So, you know, further research would be done and maybe there is a road that maybe it does extend here as it's shown maybe, but it, it's tough to tell. But on our property that we're looking at, this subject property has a public road here and a private road that gets it here. So access looks to be okay. Now we look at topography. If we come up to this part right here, this layer list, we can click on it. And it's going to give us a list of layers. And if we come down, we can click on the elevation contours. We're going to zoom back into our property. If we lose it, we can hit this right here. And that brings us back to the property. And it's probably easier to see on this one. We can look at these contours. These are elevation contours say 550 feet above sea level or above a certain point. And this next one is 545 and 540, 535, 530, and it goes down. So it slopes from the south to the north. These are not tightly bunched. If they were tightly bunched, it would be a steep slope. So this has kind of got a gradual slope going this way and it gets a little bit steeper here, kind of flattens out down here, really flat down in here on these properties. That's a horse farm, big pasture in there. So the topography is not too tight or too steep on this property. We can zoom out and look at other places where it may be steeper. And these may be areas on other properties around there that may have issues, but by and large, this one doesn't. And if we looked at the listing, um, it had, Get back to Redfin and to go through the photos. This is kind of showing part of the property there and sitting up on top, pretty flat and level, plenty of room to build on. Another view, we can see it kind of looks like it's dropping off down there. That's what the topography showed us. Kind of looking down below at the farms, but there's plenty of area in this to build. Again, we're building one single family home. So topography doesn't seem to be an issue. Let's come back to the layer list. And we can click on 
environmentally sensitive areas. And no colors come up right on our property from that, but I can see this blue line here. This blue line usually means a stream. In this case, it's a drainage ditch. And they use them out in the rural area at times, but uh, if the elevate the environmental sensitive areas show up, we can click on things and they'll show us if it's streams or wetlands. This red is a sensitive area notice on title. So if I click it off, it'll go away. So we know that's what that sensitive area is. But there's no other critical areas that this shows on it other than this blue line, which is a stream, or in this case, a drainage ditch. And if we looked at the listing, we can see this little drainage ditch that goes in, in along the side of the property. And it, it's kind of hidden back in there. Here's another view of it. So water runs through here, but it's not getting outside of the banks to impact it. So on this property, and looking at King County IMAP, we don't see any other sensitive areas on it. There's another stream that's running off to the side of the property over here. There's another dotted thing over there that if we click on streams, up oh, there it went away over there. You see up in this area. So there's another stream over there. So sensitive areas, there's, there's a little concern maybe here for a drainage ditch, but we still got plenty of room to build our one home. Now we're gonna look at utilities. Couple things we can look at. Uh, back to King County IMAP. It's showing water here. And if there was a water district, it would say here like public. And we would know that a public service provides water in Seattle, it's Seattle Public Utilities. There may be a, a private water district or city that provides it. In this case, there is none. Uh, and if we had seen the listing up in the beginning, in the description, it would have said, you know, more about the property. It said extensive work had been done, a drilled well for the water, an approved septic design, four bedroom septic design, and the power is already installed on the property. So we have that described in the listing here at King County. It's telling us that they don't know about the water. They don't know that there's a well on here. There's no public sewer in the area, so that's gonna mean you're doing septic and the listing said approved septic design. If it didn't say that in the listing, we would presume we probably have to do a, a, a perk test or septic. So if it's not public sewer available and there's no approved septic design, then probably need to do a perk test. Now this confirms that there's private road access to the property, but for our utilities, this is showing us that there's not water on this property already that the county knows of, but the listing said there was a well. If it had said public here, then we had known there's public water. For the sewer, if it said public sewer, you'd know there's public sewer. Uh, power, we'd want to know. And in this case, sometimes you look at the, the photos and you see aerial power lines. So we know that power is available at the property just by the power lines there in this case. There was a picture here of a power vault on the property. So the listing said there was power to the property and there's a power vault here that we can pull power from. And this is underground, so we don't see the above ground power line. So in this example, this property has, we know that the well, and here's actually uh, the well head. It's not pumping right now, but on this particular property, there is water already on the property. It has an approved four bedroom septic design. So the septic is ready to be installed and it has power to the property. So there's other utilities, but those are the main ones. So kind of back in summary here on, on the sample property, we looked at the zoning and the zoning is agricultural, but it allows one home per 10 acres. And if we wanted to build one home on it, we have the 10 acres, but we have an approved lot. So we could, so for this property, for a single family home, the zoning would allow it. We know the square footage, the size of it. And we know that the allowed use says that if we wanted to do single family detached home, it is a permitted use. If we want to build an apartment on this property, that is not going to be an allowed use. If we want to do a mobile home park, not an allowed use. 
Once again, we went over the access and we saw that we have access from a existing road all the way to the property. We don't see any other issues. We went over the topography and we said that it sloped from the south to the north, but the sample property did not have too steep of slope that would prohibit building. Uh, we skipped, of course, the title report and the soils. We're not looking at those today. Uh, we discussed the sensitive area was maybe that one area for the drainage ditch could be a concern. It didn't appear to be affecting the building site, but good to note on there. And the utilities we reviewed that there is water on the property, the sewer septic design is ready and there's power there. So, you know, on this opinion of the property, again, if we want to do a single family home, it appears to have the elements that would work. What further research might you want to do? Uh, if there was an approved septic design, maybe look into a perk test, a percolation test. If there wasn't power to the property to figure out where it is, if you couldn't find water, determine where the closest water availability, a hydrant or, or, or main was. And are you ready to buy this property? So this is one that already sold. The one I'll give you is, is for sale and you could decide if no, it looks great, let's buy it now or no, I'd wanna run away from it. There's just too many unknowns with, with raw land, but what you're really trying to do is not just say no, raw land's bad, it's too difficult to look, figure out, is just kind of analyze and look at these to figure out if you're ready to buy or what further research or questions you might need. So hopefully this is 30, 45 minutes of an assignment and that you once you do it once, it's much easier to do again in the future. Uh, I've included this as well. And this is kind of just a summary of Zatsum again, zoning, access, title, topography, sensitive area soils, utilities, and market study. And you'd really want to do all these things for a feasibility of a site, but we're just doing high level right now. So hope this helps you figure it out. And uh, if you have questions, you can reach out to me and glad to help more.